O'Reilly, this is Alex from Mind for Attraction 2.0. This is me from Whole Foods. Um, this is the one, this is the Whole Foods in Chinatown. I got banned from Whole Foods, but the one in Union Square, not the one in Chinatown. <laughs> but seriously, they can literally come over here and be like, sorry, we need to, we need to get you. Um, we're under arrest. <laughs> I didn't do nothing wrong. I'm just, they, they just banned me from like um, Whole Foods a couple years ago. But anyways, I'm not talking about that. What am I talking about? In today's video, we're going to talk about how to give a guy mind, a mind gasm. I've talked about this a few times and a lot of you guys have been asking me to make a video about this but I just haven't done it because I just had a, I just had other topics in mind but I feel like I want to talk about this because this is extremely interesting a mindgasm to me is about for, for example if a if, if orgasm what's an orgasm it's a it's an accumulation of of of, um, of tension right of tension and a desire to release attention all right and um, an orgasm is more about releasing the tension in a pleasurable way but the only way for the, re the for the release for the for it to be pleasurable there needs, there needs to be pressure and tension and anticipation all right and in this video this is all about how to create a desire in his mind how to create the need so that when when you stimulate him it gushes out in his mind and it just really it just releases dopamine that's what a mind gas in is a release of dopamine excess amount of dopamine this is created through creating anticipation and creating a need oh, oh there's a cop right there <laughs> no, no he's just crossing some guard <laughs> i'm like oh shit fuck fuck i should have never done this <laughs> all right so yeah like so it's all about stimulating his mind and making him think of you on a consistent basis so when you become when you become his when you give him mindgasm he's gonna be like oh my god i need to be with her and his mind is just gonna think of you he's just gonna think he's gonna think extremely provocative talk, um, thoughts in addition to that you become his fantasy and his temptation and this is done through some of these tactics i'm gonna give you guys all right so let's get started this is some of the notes that I've taken from the other videos, but it relates to this. And it says, when the, when the brain is used, when the brain is used to a stimulus, the brain will create. When the brain does not does not receive stimulation, um, the brain will create its own stimulus to satisfy itself, um, like phantom limbs or sensory deprivation. When you deprive of sense of, of your sense, like um, sensory deprivation, your brain usually creates its own stimulus. Or when your hand is cut off, your brain will make you think that your hand is there. That's pretty fucking crazy right and you actually feel pain um so by intentionally giving a guy space all right af after physically teasing him or emotionally or mentally teasing him um it'll as long as the relationship doesn't have a, a history of cheating and whatnot it's good it's a, it, it those are the good times that you can use space in order to make him fantasize about you and make him desire you you see that 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 creating of space is the tension that is equivalent to turning a guy on physically but in this case, it's more turning him on mentally, all right? So whenever you create a space, the brain will exaggerate your perception, the perception he has of you because there's a need. So because there's a need, it's kind of like shopping hungry. When you shop hungry, you buy a lot more things. So when you make him needy by creating a desire for you, by stimulating him and then creating space, it exaggerates his perception of you and it gives you more and it gives, and it gives his perception of you a more glorious aura. All right, and so this is how you keep a guy thinking about you through giving him space, through, um, through giving him the right amount of space. All right, making him making him wait for you and making him crave for you. All right, so let me show you guys how to do it. All right, these are some of the ways that you guys can do it. The first way to do it is to like like a way so you could, that you could create that um, that mindgasm is long distance relationship is a way to do it because when you have that long distance relationship, right, um, it creates a space for need. You 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 want the person, but there's a barrier, right? And what and and because of that, you continually can just keep thinking about the possibility as to what would happen if they could get close to you. All right, and that's and, and when that this and when that distance is, is is cut off, you you feel that oh my god, this is so exciting! I cannot wait. I, I, this is so exciting being with you, right? But the but the only reason why it's exciting being with someone from along this relationship is because of the space, the tension that's created, the lack of the lack of the lack of um satisfaction from the desire that you have for the person, all right? So that's what that's why to do it. But the fundamental truth that what makes this work is the barrier, the the desire and the barrier to your desire. Right, so it, it enhances the, the 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 outcome. But the truth is, is that the, the outcome is always anticlimactic. But it doesn't matter. The point is, is that in his mind, his mind, his his brain is gonna give him a surge of dopamine as soon as you get with him, because of that. that because you you stimulated him and you wrote and you and you were and you were raising his body temperature. 
from, right? So another way for you to create that mind gasm in his mind is through sending provocative pictures of you from time to time. All right, but the thing is, there has to be space. For example, it's kind of like, let's meet up in two weeks, right? Let's meet up in two weeks, right? But then with the, between those two weeks, because you're busy, between those two weeks, you send him pictures. You send him pictures of what you want to do with him. You send him pictures of, of not naked picture, but provocative pictures. You're not sending him the booth photos, but rather you're sending him the cleavage. It makes him think. He's like, man, I cannot wait for him to, to fucking see you. And so as soon as he sees you, as soon as you're around him, boom, he's like, oh my God, I've been waiting for this. And it'll release more dopamine, excess amount of dopamine, if you would have not done otherwise. All right? um, another one would be like, when again, it has to be distance. There has to be distance in terms of um, um, when you're going to meet him, all right? Because when he's around you, there is a way for you to create that mind gas and that desire for you, but not in this case. So if you, if you have distance, it could be like talking about how you're about to take a hot, steamy shower. In his mind, he's like, oh, man, damn. But you do that right after stimulating him. For example, it's kind of like, let's say you guys are Skyping, right? You guys Skype and you dress provocatively, right? And you're like, I'll be back. I got to go take a hot shower. He's like, oh, my God, imagine how that would look like. Right, but the only but then you shut off. Then you're like, all right, I gotta go, right? And you shut off the Skype. Now in his mind, he's like, oh man, I imagine how that looks like. He's like, just thinking about that, right? And that's how we're to do it. Like you create the stimulation, you create the desire, and then boom, you create the barrier, right? And then you leave him, and then you leave his brain to to, to fantasize about you. But the only way for his brain to fantasize about you, the only way to fantasize about you, is to create that space right after the stimulation. Okay, so these are some other ways to, to give him my orgasm is don't reveal your intentions and make him figure it out. Something you got to realize is that making him find out exactly what you want from him is not good. It's actually quite counterproductive. So when the guy wants a relationship with you, right, and, and, and you know that, don't, don't, don't turn up the yoso on it. Make him figure it out. Why? Because as soon as he figures it out, as soon as he figures out that you like him, He's going to like you more. But the process of finding out, the uncertainty part, is what makes it fun. Now, the uns- when, there, when there's uncertainty, you, co- you got to encourage him by giving him signs that you like him. Because a guy will easily get discouraged when he sees the sign that a guy doesn't like him. Right? So you make him lose hope through being cold, right? And not revealing your intentions. And when he says, what are we? You, you say you're not, you're not sure about it. But your actions speak otherwise. So that in his mind, he's like, man, I don't, she doesn't like, she tells me that she's not sure, but her actions say so. So, and it drives him crazy because there's a contradicting, there's a contradiction there. So, it's never wise to actually reveal what you want to, what kind of relationship you want with a guy if you want a deep relationship. Unless you, if you want to just have, if you just want to be fucked, but it's okay, do that, right? But when you just want a, when you want more than that, you want him to figure it out. Because as soon as he figures it out, it's kind of like a puzzle. If you don't, if you don't think too hard about the puzzle, if it's not difficult, um, figuring out the puzzle is not as rewarding. All right. So you want to be his puzzle, his Rubik's cube. All right. Another one would be turning him on, similar to what I said, turning him on and then backing off. Um, turn him on and make him desire you, and then back off and watch him chase. By turning him on, by turning him on, you show, you you show him the types of pleasure that you're able to provide. You know, like you show him how you look. You give them little sneak peeks as to the, 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 what kind of things you're able to do. Talking about your previous sex experiences. Talking about what you love to do in bed. And then you're able to provide that, right? And then you take a step back and show him what happens when you're out of his life. All right? So you show him the pleasure. You show him the fantasy. You talk about it. You insinuate him by, by you insinuate to him the kind of pleasure you're able to provide by the way you dress. All right? And then you create space and back off. Because in that space is when his mind is going to begin to operate. His mind says, I don't have that one thing that makes me feel good. So now let me recreate it in my own mind. It's kind of like people who choose, try to stop smoking weed. They'll notice that when you try to stop smoking weed, your, your brain will, be, will begin to give you dreams of being high. You begin to dream actually being high. It's kind of crazy. Not from my own experience. Um, <laughs> this will make him appreciate you more and will instill the desire to spend time with you. All right, another one will be being in, be inconsistent. Don't always be there. All right, so being inconsistent is all about... Get, you you want to be consistent, but inconsistently consistent. Don't always be there. Don't always have his back. Be inconsistent, yet pleasurable. Meaning, flake on him. Like, let's say you have plans, right? Reschedule. Once in a while, reschedule. Okay, reschedule at least two times in a row to frustrate him. All right? But make sure that when you're going to see him, you give him an offer he cannot refuse, even if he's mad at you. 
For example, let's say you're flaking him two times. He's fucking pissed off at you, right? And you know he's pissed off. He's like, you know what? I'm done with you. My pride cannot take this, right? Fine. He's mad at you. He's angry. But deep down, he wants to see you. But he won't see you because of his pride. So what do you do then? You literally give him an offer you can't refuse. Hey, I'm down. I'm, let's hang out. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for you. I'm downstairs. Oh, let's hang out. I'm here. I'll be waiting for you in 30 minutes. I'm right here. I'm right at this space. Come, come hang out with me. Like you give him an offer, he just cannot refuse. Even though he's mad at you, he's like, "Damn, this is too easy, man." She's, she's, so, she's telling him she's down here. She's down. She's downstairs waiting for me. You tell him, "What's your address?" Why? Just tell me your address. I'll be there right now. Like, again, you get him to the point where he's like, "I don't want to see you no more." But then, right after that, right at that point, you give him an offer, he can't refuse. And now, he's been waiting for you all this time. Now he's frustrated. Now he's like, "Oh my god, what am I, what am I fucking doing for pissing me off, man?" Like you give. It's all about creating that tension, that frustration, and then you being there and you releasing it by your presence, all right? But the key is, is to actually provide them some pleasure, because the mind gets them can't come if you don't give them pleasure, <laughs> if you don't stimulate them, all right? But the whole point is that you create that space and that desire to, to ramp up the tension and abide the temperature, all right? Another one would be friend zone home, and then make him feel like he won you over, and this is big. Because, uh, again, it, it all comes down to revealing your intentions. You want to fr- you want to act like your friends on the home. You want to act like you are unsure about him. You don't know that, that you're just a friend, that I see you as a friend. But at the same time, show signs that you're attracted to him. For example, you say, I don't know. We, I don't know. I think we should just, we just, we should be friends, right? He's like, go oh, for real? Yeah, we should be friends. But then you invite him over to hang out with you. You invite him over alone to hang out with you. You, 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 you dress in a way that's tempting for him to escalate. Be like, man, look at the way she's dressed. I mean, I mean, she, man, she wants me, right? And then as soon as she tries to go for the move, you're like, oh, we're just friends. But act as though you are resistant. Act as though you want to be friends, but that is difficult because he's so sexy. That's how you want that. You want it to be like you just cannot resist yourself. Because what's going to happen then, he's going to be like, oh, my God. Like, she wants, to be, she wants to be friends, but at the same time, she looks like she likes me. So let me try and win her over, all right? And now you're like, oh, my God, I cannot resist. Boom. But in his mind, he worked for you. In his mind, this took work. In his mind, it was his masculinity that got you. You see, this is, there's a sense of pride there. And that's something that stimulates the mind. You got, if it's, well, I'm telling you, friend zone and a guy is actually quite interesting because it shows you his character. I don't recommend you guys doing that on me especially. Fuck you guys if you guys want to do that on me. I swear to God, if, you, if anyone tries to do that on me, don't you fucking try that shit, all right? Don't you dare try that on me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gonna work on me. <laughs> All right, the the another one. Use the art. Uh, use the art of insinuation to instill fear. St- insinuation is all about making the guy feel like he's inadequate, making the guy feel like you that 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 you're not that he's not your type. For example, the art of insinuation is all about being subtle. Suddenly jabbing at his jabbing at his um, insecurities. For example, if he, I always said, if he's dark skinned, for example, like me, right? Let's say you're talking to me, right? And um, you know, I'm flirting with you. Yo, girl, what's up, girl? Yo, girl, you know, I saw you, girl. You, I think you're cute. Yo, let me holler at you, chick. What's your MySpace, right? Let's say I'm hitting on you, right? Put me on your top five. And suddenly you tell me, you know what, man? I, I love. I was watching. I was watching the Titanic. I love guys who look like Leonardo DiCaprio. He's just so cute. He's just so sexy. No, he's not cute. He's sexy. He's just so sexy, right? In my, and then you change the topic. You change the topic as soon as you say that, right? In my mind, I'm like, I'm not pulling a Michael. I can't pull a Michael Jackson. I mean, damn, I don't look like Leonardo DiCaprio, right? But the whole point is that you change. You say that that you you like that kind of guy that looks the total opposite of how I am, and you change the topic, right? What tends to happen is that it instills insecurity in my heart. You know, I'm like, oh, damn. I mean, I don't look like you're out of the cap. What the fuck? Right? And for most guys, they're going to think about that the next day. And what tends to happen is that they tend to, they tend to have this indirect, indirect insecurity when they're around you. And you know what tends to happen? As a result, anything that you do will validate them. Anything that you do will be rewarding. Anything that you do will drive them crazy. Why? Because they're looking to find out if they're worthy. They felt a lack of self-esteem around you. So as a result, they're going to be demanding that from you. They could demand that you make them feel good just to validate them. So you know what happens? Anything that you do is going to be worth something. If you like your status, it's going to be like, oh my God, maybe she likes me. If you say hi to him, he's going to be like, oh my God, maybe she likes me. If you invite him out, he's going to be like, oh my God, maybe she likes me. The whole point is that now, 
because he knows that you're not that he's not your type he's gonna work to build himself up through getting your validation and so to him you liking him is a big deal you liking him is a sign that he's actually an attractive person if it fills his fantasy all right and so when you become that you when you become that channel that vessel of of that, that fulfills his fantasy he's going to he's going to react to almost anything that you do and so you, you're going to become a big source of validation i hope i'm hoping that makes sense okay i'm hoping that makes sense i feel i feel a little bit i don't feel that good rhythm in this video but whatever right i'm frustrating him frustrating him but provide pleasure like i said earlier like you want to become a source of pain again you can only appreciate the light when you live in darkness or your whole life you can only appreciate freedom when freedom is taken away from you you can only he can only appreciate the pleasures if you give him some frustration all right so again you frustrate him in different ways like i said earlier through through flaking the home a few times and then get, giving him an offer you can't refuse which is he's like you know what i'm not gonna see you no more but then you know what you said you said to yourself oh for real okay hey i'm downstairs let's hang out i'm down here let's hang out that's an offer a guy just cannot refuse as lo I, it, it, maybe he'll say no if you like let's meet up here but if you're in front of his fucking door you see so he's gonna have to let go of his ego he's gonna have to say you know what i forgive you you're already here fuck it right you see what i'm saying it, 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 and so he's gonna be like damn it's kind of like a drug dealer where you buy drugs for him but he makes you wait 20 minutes but the but the drugs are fucking dope as fuck right you hate him but at the same time like you're like damn i, I can't deal with that. i mean i gotta get over that because he just he just got he got this shit right and so you become that you become that source of frustration and so what tends to happen is that guy's gonna want to tame you and so anything that you do is gonna be rewarding rewarding become a source of pain and you suddenly become a source of pleasure it's kind of like having a critic on television let's say you play basketball like lebron james he plays basketball everybody loves him right but then you have one critic that talks shit about you you know what happens when you win you know who who you're gonna be looking for, who whose comments you're gonna be looking for, and whose and whose comments is gonna provide the most pleasure, the one who hated you the most. That's the person who you're gonna be like, all right, let me see what he says. And when he gives you the praise, you know what happens? That's gonna be feel so much better, much more, much better than the ones that were constantly praising you throughout your whole career. And that's the thing. Don't just be a source of pain, a pleasure. Be the source of pain. What you wanna do also is establish a, establish a pattern. Like a certain pattern of, of, of consistency. For example, it's kind of like being the night... Actually, no, that actually doesn't go with this topic, to be perfectly honest with you. So I'm, so I'm not going to fully elaborate on this. But this is how you do it. That's how, that's how you create a mindgasm. You create that space, that lack of stimulation, right? And then you give them some stimulation. And then you create that space once again, and you give them more. This could come in many different forms. If you guys want to know more about this, go check out the go check out the um, the video, um, the, the two-step the two formula, the hot and cold method to make them chase. I'm gonna leave the, the link of the video on the on at the end of the channel at the end of the video like the the next videos I'm gonna put that there alright um but yeah that's how you do it yo um anyways if you guys need one-on-one -on -one coaching let me know I'm about to go to I'm about to go do some yoga right now at the YMCA in Chinatown I'm in Chinatown right now check, check it out right uh, right here right looks nice right it's a beautiful day um anyways it's actually my first action I gotta I gotta head out um and I see you guys later bye bye yeah, bye bye <laughs> there you go.